I also come in. All right. Uh, Les, uh, we've got a uh, another hour of cruise control, jam-packed. First story is a pretty good one. Used car prices, used vehicle prices are coming down big time. That's uh, filed that in the it's about time department. And yep. uh, this is great. This is great news because you know, a lot of people really depend on buying used cars Yep. for affordability. It's great. Yep. And then uh, if you want something new, it looks like uh, some prices of Buick models uh, will be coming down as well. I believe their Envision is coming down, which is a nice looking vehicle. Nice looking. Actually, vehicle. I was going to say the same thing. I, I find that very attractive. Yep. The Enclave, um, actually. I'm sorry. The Enclave. The Enclave, yeah. yeah. The, uh, and Hyundai uh, shows off a production Ionic 5N. Yeah. At the Goodwood Festival. We'll talk about it. They, uh, they also had their RN22E, which is the prototype of this version. It went up the hill and right into the hay bales and just yeah, wiped out. Everyone was wonderful okay. Wonderful hill climb. I, I want to do that. It was more of a hay bale hammer. <laughs> yeah. It's the Richard Hammond approach. To <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll talk about that, though, that production card. And, and then Ford is going to go rally racing with the Mustang Mach-E which is kind of uh, a great way to show the performance brand, don't you think? I think it's terrific. Uh, I just love that Ford has been into rallying now for almost 60 years. And this, this is going to be a great vehicle for it. I think. That's right. And you get to uh, have an at-the-wheel review of the Volvo V60, which happens to be a, a particular model that I am quite interested in. Really? Yeah, it's it's like a station wagon, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I I could possibly be talked into buying one of those oh, uh, wow. used most likely, but well, used car prices are coming down. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, has the Google system where it's constantly attached to Google. The uh, so it does the phone updates. It has Apple CarPlay. But it doesn't have Android Auto because Google Maps is part of the vehicle. So you just kind of get in there and, you know, it will tie to your Google account. So you could do the great thing that where you uh, put in your location in your phone and then it will just show up on your dashboard. So uh, I like the form factor. It, it was like a station wagon, but it was an SUV too, had the cross country uh, it's the cross-country version of the vehicle, but uh, just elegant, stylish, clean yeah. interior. Nicely uh, done. Nicely done. So uh, we'll have that uh, at the wheel review um, and a whole lot more coming up on cruise control. So stay tuned. This is Cruise Control, Control. your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin Control. because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And... Welcome to Cruise Control. This is your automotive, your online automotive magazine on the air, actually. And we are here every week to uh, run through what's going on in the industry. We being me, I'm Les Jackson. That other guy at the other microphone is Fred Staub. You know him. Uh, for those uh, longtime listeners, we, uh, we just keep at it because stories just never end and the whole industry just keeps changing quickly and that's where we are right <laughs> yeah we are and on our first story less uh is changing quickly in a good way especially if you're looking for a used vehicle used vehicle prices are coming down dramatically 
and it's actually helping the economy, which is good for everyone. And it's not just uh, EVs, it's it's everything that are coming down. Matter of fact, they're down by about 4.2% and dropping. Excellent. Excellent. That's, that's great news. And over at Buick, uh, one of their new models costs less as well. Yeah, that's a good Boy, news. Don't you love it when prices are down stuff costs less yeah new or used all right well we'll take it and then uh over uh, uh, across the pond the goodwood festival of speed is underway hyundai showed off its ionic 5n a very high performance vehicle and uh what a good place to showcase it right it is that's a um, they have a, a hill climb there which is legendary someone's driveway right it, it yeah <laughs> um, it it's very cool yeah and we'll talk about that also and mini uh uses ai clones uh to sell new uh new evs and well you know it takes a picture you of you and then has you talking to yourself right i don't could be a little creepy. What do you think? It's, I think it's creepy. Um, <laughs> what is Convincing it? Convincing you know, yourself. Uh, they talk about right. targeted advertising. I mean, did you ever watch something and you get like a weird ad that's like, well, that I don't speak that language or that's yeah. not something I would buy. You know, that's not anything that has to do with me. And uh, so what could be more on point than an ad that is you trying to convince you to buy a vehicle. Right. That just <laughs> reminds me of of uh, the old uh, comedian joke that, you know, I wouldn't join a club that would have me as a member. <laughs> well, uh, another interesting article we're going to get to is, um, is vegan leather a sham? One manufacturer says yes, that it's worse for the environment than actual leather. But uh, we will talk about that, and I'm going to have an at-the-wheel review of the uh, incredible cross-country, the V60 from Volvo. Great vehicle, almost like a station wagon. Can we say station wagon? Station wagon? wagon? <laughs> we'll be right back on Cruise Control, <laughs> your on-air automotive magazine. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We are your good news automotive <laughs> show. <laughs> well, who couldn't use some good news right about now? I mean, um, well, this news, used car prices are falling the most since the start of the pandemic. Remember, I used this example of my friend John. He wanted to buy a used Ford Edge. Something happened. He had to wait a year. He comes back, the same vehicle, same mileage, was $10,000 more. $10,000 uh, more. Uh, it's not like, oh, you know, sorry you missed the Amazon Prime Day. It's it's $29 mm -hmm. more. 10000 That's a lot That's, of zeros. That would make me just, you know, I, I'm sorry. And I he just had to buy it. He this. needed it. He needed it because I think his daughter wow. took the the other vehicle. So he said he was sick about it, but. He just had to do it and grin and bear it. But now things are getting much better. According to this Bloomberg article, used car prices in the United States fell 4.2% in June, the biggest monthly drop since the early days of the uh, pandemic. Now, if we can just get groceries to drop, that would be better. How about that? Yeah. Um, but uh, that that's good news. I mean... I was looking at used car prices and I was shocked. And you and I talk about this all the time. Some of the vehicles were less new than used. So we always told our yeah, listeners to look because if you can get a new vehicle um, for less money with probably with more features, I would grab it, wouldn't you? Well, I would, even if it's not quite as well equipped as the used one you've been looking at. Because you've heard this uh, new is new. You're still ahead of the game. New is new right new is new 
Yeah. You know, so uh, so that is good news for a lot of people. And then over at Buick, uh, one of their new vehicles, the Enclave, is uh, the price is going down on that. The Essence and Premium trims are $900 and $835 more affordable. But uh, the Avenir uh, has seen a, a minor price hike. But, you know, even a minor price hike, I'll take it these days, you know? Well, as long as it's minor. Yeah. Minor. Uh, I don't really know what minor is. <laughs> but I would say, to, uh, in terms of prices, I would say anything less than oh, 3%. $30 more expensive than last year's model. That's that's minor. I'll take it. That's quite minor. <laughs> I'll be like, fine. That's good. Write it up. Can I get your business today? That's uh, right. Yeah. So a little bit of good news to start off with, right? Yeah. I mean, which is, you know, it's, it's very welcome because uh, everybody's complaining about higher prices. Well, you know, especially used cars, you look at some of them that would have 100,000 miles on it and they were asking – yeah, you know, fifteen grand or something like that for for nothing stupendous, nothing you know, no, not at all, or or anything like that. Kind of run of the mill, you know, good condition used car, but high mileage. And no matter what, when you get to that high mileage, you're gonna have to do brakes. You're gonna have to do uh, a bunch of things, wheel uh, tires, you know, um, a number of things. So it's not like it's not without its its problems, um, so I think it's I think it's a good thing that uh, that the numbers are coming down, and I think it's something that uh, everyone can be happy about. Um, Goodwood Festival, Les. Uh, let's talk about Hyundai. Hyundai Ionic 5N debut. Uh, this is a hot rod electric car, rally inspired. They've done all kinds of things to the production model, including welding up the steering column, doing additional welding to the vehicle uh, to make it stiffer, which I found very interesting that they would do that, costly to do that. So it's not very like much. they're slapping on better wheels and, and a couple of other things. Um, but it is, uh, it is quite the corner rascal as they call it corner rascal they they have three pillars of performance corner rascal racetrack compatibility and everyday sports car that's kind of the you know when they do a theme board that would be the theme board that's right well everyday sports car isn't going to be a extra welding and no no the 42 additional welding points 2.1 meters of additional adhesives and motor and battery mounting are reinforced while front and rear subframes are enhanced for lat lateral rigidity. So it's World Rally Championship inspired integrated dual drive axles. We'll talk a little Boy, bit more I... about this vehicle when we come back on cruise control. But uh, <laughs> hey, I like extra welding. We'll be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. We were uh, talking about the Goodwood Festival of Speed, not necessarily a festival of uh, safe driving. No, uh, <laughs> and we were talking about the production version of the Ionic 5N, uh, which got, debuted there. Of course, uh, they had a kind of a prototype for it go up the hill, the RN22E, which crashed into some hay bales. You and I were just discussing this. You know, it's the the acceleration is so linear in an electric vehicle and so instantaneous that you have to drive differently. You almost have to start yeah. turning before 
a lot sooner. That's right. You need to stay well ahead of where the car is. Yeah. And and of course, um, if you if you go through these turns too fast, you will over or understeer, which means you'll go straight. But the turn went that way. <laughs> that's right. And you're into uh, something that's like a hay bale. Yeah. You and can find it online. It's just a hay bale yeah. explosion. And then you will have to explain, like, um, um, who was the the great British racing driver years and years ago? You know, why well, is it that you lost the turn? Well, because my tires failed to remain adhered to the road. That's right. Yes, I had Sterling an excursion. Yeah. I had an yes. an event. I, I've heard them call that right. an event. I had an event. <laughs> well. This this production version of this car, we we're talking about how there's 42 additional welding points, additional adhesives, motor and battery mounts are reinforced. It's like somebody has gone through this. Even the steering column had been strengthened yeah, to improve this. rigidity. Uh, and it has all kind of interesting modes and pedals. The end pedal, uh, which is a regenerative brake pedal, uh, is designed to provide instant turn-in behavior and enhanced throttle sensitivity. The end drift optimizer maintains drift angle by balancing multiple vehicle controls responding to real-time inputs. The end torque distribution provides fully variable front and rear torque distribution. And, and then there's a, um, let me find what they call this. It is a drift mode. Uh, a kick drift mode, I guess that kicks out the back of the car. Uh, this sounds like you need a, a pretty significant training course to drive it, doesn't it? Yes, um, or an automated system, but... N shift, N E shift, N active sound plus N E shift. Uh, you know, that could be too, with an electric car, if you can't hear the speed building up, they say if the car is completely quiet, you might not be able to drive it, right? That's right. Um, because you're feeling the acceleration, and believe me, you do feel it yeah. in, in an electric car. Um, but when you don't hear anything, it's it can be disconcerting if you're not, you know, a, a very good driver. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to drive this, though, the production version, the Ionic 5N. It's based on one of your favorite cars, isn't it? You had that car uh, in the standard, ver without the additional welding in it. He's that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Now, the problem with the production car, though, is if we test this thing on our oh-so-smooth roads, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a a tooth shaker. Well, you know, there's the thing. And I was thinking about they did all that additional welding. And then they had to reinforce the steering column because yeah. if you're taking out that vibration, you're moving it somewhere. And they probably said, well, the steering column's fine. And then all yeah. of a sudden we did all that welding and everything's stiffer. Now the steering column's shaking, you know. So it it kind of moves around and engineers can engineer it. You know, like the cocktail shaker in the original Camaro. That's those, right. Those, those vic, uh, viscous uh, uh, damping <laughs> units that they put on the uh, in the corners. It's just managing vibration and taking it somewhere and putting it somewhere that you don't feel it. But steering column is not the place to put it. The motors turn up at 21,000 RPM, Les. That's just that's that's spinning. Formula One spinning. Yeah. So, uh, cool stuff from Hyundai. Hey, let's uh, switch over to a different topic. Um, interesting article, I believe it was on the Autovlog, about uh, one manufacturer says vegan leather interiors are a sham. Now, you and I have found some of this material just, I mean, we don't know what it's made with. It's probably made with plastic and, and petrochemicals and things like that. Um, but it is uh, it's sort of like high-end vinyl. You wouldn't know it wasn't leather unless you knew. Like 
I think what is it? Weather Tex is one of the names, and the Weather Tech Tex Tan used to be um, a name back Le in the leatherette. 60s and 70s. Warm Leatherette. <laughs> you don't remember yeah. that song from the from the 80s, but um, but uh, there's a statement from a, a leather supplier, premium leather supplier, known as the Bridge of Weir, and. Uh, they are saying that everyone thinking they're being green and vegan and getting the uh, vegan leather interior, they called it being greenwashed, meaning you're being hoodwinked into thinking it's greener than leather. And I guess that's one way to think about it. You know, leather comes from the hides of animals used for food. So you are basically recycling a product or using a product that's that's true that would go to waste anyway wouldn't it well they the hides never go to waste they, they'll you know they, there's a huge market for leather yeah so i don't but, know i i mean at, at the product itself they can make synthetic leather and it's nice um it started with Tesla. It seems to always start with Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> they had a vegan leather interior that they charged thirty thousand dollars for less. Yeah, that's kind of high. And for vinyl it is, seats, it is kind of high. And we have uh, frequently um, talked about the quality of Tesla's interiors. Mm -hmm. Lack of quality. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen one of the vegan leather cabins, but I doubt that it's high quality. Um, you know, it's interesting why they don't use leather from U.S. cattle for car seats if you want premium car seats. Do you know why that is? Yeah, because of uh, barbed wire. That's right. Barbed wire is outlawed in Europe, but used in the U.S., and it creates uh, blemishes, right? scars that is that's right you know a whole hide i've i've bought hides entire hides before for upholstering cars i'm restoring and uh there are spots where there have been scars and they on the skin yeah and you basically have to work around them or use that for a piece for a for an armrest or whatever right mm -hmm. yeah so what do you think is is vegan leather greenwashing or is it the real deal have you driven a car with vegan leather? Give us something in the comments. Uh, let us know, and we'll we'll talk about it some more with you. We always like your input here at Cruise Control. So, so uh, plan on giving us some feedback on that, right, Les? Yeah, um, I'd be very curious to to hear from someone on that. Is it greenwashing if that interior material is made from, let's say, recycled water bottles or something else? Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I, th I think you have to think about what's it like to sit on and uh, exactly, you know, what's the end user experience when we come back, we've got plenty more to go on cruise control. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, mini using yourself to sell you a car. What? <laughs> yeah. It scans your face, creates an AI likeness of you an artificial intelligence likeness of you. And then it starts trying to convince you to buy a Mini. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the range of some new Jeeps on a new platform on Stellantis. We'll go rally racing with Ford and their vehicle. Uh, and then we'll also take a ride in the Volvo V60 Cross Country B5 Automatic. It's the vehicle I'll be having an at-the-wheel review of. A lot to go. Stay tuned. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We um, we just finished up with with uh, vegan leather versus <laughs> real leather, and uh, I I'm all for trying anything. Green washing. There's your term for the. They're green watching. Wash. There we are. Washing. Meaning, uh, hey, I'm very environmentally friendly, but it turns out I'm not environmentally friendly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So you, you're considered a green-washed if, 
if I tro exactly. told you, you know, I don't know, you know, yes, it's That's great right. to have black smoke coming out of your uh, tailpipe. <laughs> there we are. And over at Mini, mm. and I, I'm not terribly sure I go along with this. Okay. Uh, they want to use an AI clone of me. Of you to sell or yourself. Me, uh, a Mini. Yeah. So how does this work? So basically, obviously, you want a pitch person on the ad that's going to uh, appeal to yourself appeal to you right so who would appeal to you more than yourself i guess and your inner self telling you you really ought to buy a mini so what they've done is uh they've created a program where it scans your face through your camera with your selfie camera and then it becomes an ai version of you and will say uh you know well why should I get a mini? You know, you record yourself saying, why should I get a mini? And then this this AI con, you know, concoction will tell you why you should get a mini. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the article uh, was in uh, Car Buzz and the guy tried it and he said, well, my mini, my AI person didn't know much about cars, <laughs> which is, that's a bad thing because AI will tell you what you want you know um it said uh, the electrified mini cooper is charged by goblin singing karaoke <laughs> <laughs> okay um well uh, that's helpful yeah and uh it was uh it was interesting uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that i i i wonder i wonder um that what they also do less is the version of you it it listens to you and it will talk in your voice but lower because that's supposedly how you hear your inner voice in your head hmm. it's lower from reverberation uh okay they also they also i did not realize this but it was mentioned in this car buzz article that they've done some fun things through the years besides this uh <laughs> so the voice assistant is available uh and that sounds like a prison guard i don't know whether i like that or uh you can get it get the voice assistant to sound like an english bulldog called spike which i would like much better i think yeah <laughs> yeah so but, what do you think about uh, this yeah. well you know i i like creative stuff but um i really don't like the idea of a of a clone of me selling me the car um unless they're giving me a commission to sell the car <laughs> yeah um, paying you I for just, being in the ad <laughs> i have always I, I mean my whole adult life i've always resented helping a company sell me something that's why i i don't like wearing shirts with logos on them. I don't. Right. Uh, you know, if, if you want me to advertise your product, then you're going to have to pay, pay for it. Pay for it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, but they're there. I think we're going to see a lot more AI type stuff like this. And um, Mini just happens to be. I the think first we one. will. Yeah. And someone said you should ask why the car only has 114 miles of range. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Although they are going to have a new version that will have between 186 and 248. How about ask, why doesn't it have 400 miles of range? And why does it cost yeah. so much? I can ask. <laughs> I can ask questions if you want. Um, this, is a, this answers a question that we never thought of. What about rally racing and a Ford Mach-E? Well, Ford revealed this this week. The Mustang Mach-E Rally, hardcore off-roader, uh, and it is aimed at uh, running rally races. It was unveiled at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and uh, we'll go through that hill climb. Uh, Ot Tanak, world rally champion, current driver of the M Sport Ford Puma, will, will be at the wheel of this. It's an interesting name, Ot Tanak. Atanak. There, 
they're always uh, you know Swedish or Norwegian oh it's just amazing how many of these rally drivers are you know from that part of Europe well one of the best names of course unfortunately he died at the Indy 500 but was Swede Savage I always thought you want Swede a race Sa car yes. name and I think that was his name. And it's like, wow, that is that is a race driver name, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, and actually, one of the great, great rally uh, drivers was uh, Remy Julien, mm -hmm. who was one of the few French mm -hmm. drivers. Um, but, yeah, they, they always tend to have kind of interesting names. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, remember... And this was just an, an acronym of his name, Danny Ungaius. He was Hawaiian, right? But the name right. looked like on the gas, so that yeah. was, <laughs> he drove everything. I think he drove Indy. He drove funny cars. He drove, he drove everything. He was uh, an interest interesting driver, Danny Ungaius. So a couple of cool names, but Sweet Savage. That was probably my my favorite. I thought that was that one. Yeah, that one almost. I always thought, did, did a movie company, you know, give Come him a name? Come up with that name, or... yeah, Central Casting, yeah. But in uh, fact, no. That's his name, yeah, or was his name, yeah. So uh, let's talk about this uh, rally vehicle from Ford. Uh, more ground clearance than the regular models. Uh, I think this is going to be a great way to uh, show off the vehicle. It's based around the GT Performance model, so look at 480 horsepower, 600 pound feet of torque, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> um, 60 miles an hour, uh, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Um, of course, it might be a little slower with those rally tires, but this would be fun to drive. I mean, think about this. Once again, we we're talking about how you have to drive differently in an electric vehicle. Driving rally, I mean, you know, talk about a lot of turns and and things coming up on you very quickly. That's that would be interesting in that vehicle, don't you think? Absolutely. Um, you, you've again, you got to, you know, things happen fast. Very fast. But you do very have a fast. rear wing, so all the world is better. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh... And never ever. Uh, ride with Richard Hammond. <laughs> that seems to be an <laughs> ongoing theme here on Cruise Control <laughs> so, today. Well, sadly, he has crashed more than any well-known person I can think of. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, uh, plenty more to go here. Um, BMW says it's ready to sell those color-changing cars. Remember, we saw one of them at one of the car shows. It would change colors. Uh, they have separate patents. This is from our friends over at Car Buzz. Uh, they want to give customers the option of applying decorative film to any vehicle surface where it can change color. And it will have smart glass in it, an LCD layer that can be switched between transparent and opaque, uh, an e-paper layer that can switch between two colors, and you could even have wood veneer and switch to wood veneer <laughs> for an old school look. Um, and this will be basically like a wrap that can be glued to your car. Now, what comes to mind? We were just talking about racing. Sponsorships. Imagine you're yes. at Le Mans. Yes. And you'll say, well, you can sponsor the first uh, 100 laps. I, how many laps is Le Mans? I don't know. It's a lot. Well, let's see. It's about eight miles, so 24. It's a lot. Yeah. So you can sponsor the first Many. 100 laps and be have your logo on my car, and then I will flip a switch or type something into a computer, or the person in my pit will change it, and then the next sponsor will come up. What about that? It's like it's selling, it's like it's selling airtime, but... Great marketing idea. I think... This will become a big deal. I think it will also be a big deal for uh, people that put on vinyl wraps. I don't. I think it will change. You know, trucks. You don't have to have a 
a sign painted on the side. You can have it say different things. It'll be advertising on everything, which might be the downside. But uh, I also think it will be show you what's going on in the front of the truck, which I, I like a lot that you will be able to see what's going on in the front of the truck when you're behind it. So just my talking tech prediction. When we come back at the wheel review time, this time it's the Volvo V60 cross country. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's time for another At The Wheel review. This time comes from the folks over at Volvo. It is the V60 Cross Country Ultimate. And uh, it was quite a vehicle, Les. Uh, I love the fact that, well, it's basically a station wagon, isn't it? <laughs> and and we are happy for that uh it was a beautiful vehicle it's powered by the b5 engine which is a mild hybrid powertrain got those uh vertical taillights do you know when they first came out i did a little research volvo 850 back in 1992 yep. was the first vehicle to have them they've gotten a little bit more well integrated now and are certainly a look for the volvo uh lineup V60 cross country, I would call it a mildly raised <laughs> station wagon, basically, uh, but a very, very nice take. Uh, of course, Scandinavian style interior, beautiful ventilated leather in white with black accents, uh, just a clean, modern interior. Uh, it had Apple CarPlay, but not Android Auto because it has Google built in. This is a built in all on all the time. Uh, Google setup, so Google Maps is right there. If you want to start it, you give that a little twist. If you want to stop it, same deal, no push button. Got the, your uh, crystal shifter to uh, change up the gears. Uh, real nice, just high-end interior, just uh, really, really well-designed, clean. It's dominated by that vertical screen, uh, which is easy to see and just beautifully... Uh, beautifully done we had a uh incredible sound system in this vehicle out back decent leg room not huge but still passengers get the wonderful leather seats there's heated seats in the back ac controls and a couple of usb c's thrown in nice to have rear heated seats though that's become a lot more uh common in vehicles that uh that we drive these days it used to be just only ultra high-end vehicles but uh but I like it. I like to be able to change the fan speed for back passengers as well. And uh, some good connectivity in the back with uh, some USB-C connectors, uh, which are always nice to have. That is the new cup holders, of course, USB-C connectors to connect your phone or whatever. Uh, everything's quality on this car, even the way the rear seats fold down. They do fold down relatively flat, which is always nice. Out back, a lot of nicely finished storage. Uh, everything's always high end. Yes, you do have that 12 volt connector. I know you always ask about that, Les. Is that part of the package? And you get a, um, a spare with a very strange looking wheel. <laughs> I like that how, is a how strange they, looking. Yes, it is strange looking, isn't it? Uh, up oh, front, uh, out. you get uh, 247 prior. horsepower sure uh, engine, is. two yeah, liter turbocharged, and uh, you get. Uh, uh, one of the interesting things I find about the Volvo is the hood. When you put this up, uh, it goes way, way up, almost straight up. I find that interesting on Volvos. And it has uh, the gas, um, the gas charge rods to hold it up. But uh, a two liter turbocharged direct injected engine, eight speed gearbox, 247 horsepower, uh, 258 pound feet of torque. It is a 48 volt mild hybrid with regen braking and uh you know it's one of those hybrids you wouldn't even know it's there it's it's just adding uh mileage to to your uh 
vehicle and uh, really just just a good looking vehicle. Ours was in black. It's the V60 Cross Country B5 All Wheel Drive Ultimate. Um, just an elegant all wheel drive vehicle. By the way, 43% of the content comes from Sweden, 9% from Poland, and it is assembled in, I guess you say it as Ghent, Bel Belgium, right? Right, Ghent, Belgium. Yep. Uh, transmission parts come from Japan, engine parts from Sweden. Um, I like how the Volvo logo calls out in the back in the shape of the rear window. It's sort of reminiscent of other Volvos from the past. Um but uh, just was pleased with it all around. The Google uh, Assistant uh, and Google Play Store are available from that 12.3-inch progressive uh, digital display. It comes with Sirius XM, of course, Bluetooth connectivity, uh, and every kind of safety feature you can think of because they're all about safety. Ours had the ultimate package, which includes the ventilated Napa leather seats, high-quality stuff. Power front seats, four-way power lumbar, cushion extensions, front seats, which were a little weird to me. I didn't know how to put them back at first, and I thought this feels weird on my legs. Figured it out and was much better. Side scuff plates, 12-volt charging in the cargo area. Diamond-cut alloy wheels, they are 19-inch. Interior high-level illumination, uh, home garage link, power child locks. Um, and then the climate package with uh, headlamp cleaners, heated rear seats, and heated steering wheel. That added 750. Uh, luggage cover 343. Power operated tailgate for 200. I would definitely get it. Ours had we had popped for the upgraded wheels, 20 inch, seven spoke wheels with all season tires, 3200 dollars. Bowers and Wilkins premium sound. That's got you'll notice it's got that little round speaker in the center of the dash. Uh, that was $3,200. All in, $63,585 for this vehicle. Um, and uh, mileage was great. This is a mild hybrid, a 48-volt hybrid. So it got um, 23 city and highway was 30 for a relatively heavy um, all-wheel drive station wagon, I would call it less. And... Uh, I just, uh, I, I agree with you. It's one of these ones that I would like for myself because it is uh, just a good-looking vehicle. And you get, there's a look at that weird uh, uh, wheel, uh, spare yeah, tire. I wheel. like it. I, I'm very intrigued with it. Great visibility all the way around. Uh, the hybrid makes this thing perform well. That's one of the things I find. If you have a hybrid drivetrain, it takes away some of the shiftiness and the confusion of a multi-speed automatic that I've encountered in certain vehicles. There's no lag. Um, any thoughts on why that hood tilts up so far? It's nice if you want to work on the engine. You could probably pull that engine and not take the uh, hood off almost. <laughs> but uh, just a clean interior um, and clean exterior and, uh, you know, traditional Volvo styling, but if, if that's something you're looking for, you get it in spades with the V60 cross-country all-wheel drive. Great, great vehicle. It's a SUV with a low roof line, as we say, kind of station wagon-like. Um, I don't have any crash test documentation on this at all, but uh, uh, yeah, the vehicle has not been tested. But being a Volvo, I would imagine it will do well. We had one question on the warranty. 48-month, 50,000-mile limited warranty coverage, 144-month corrosion protection, unlimited mileage. Hmm. It says refer to warranty info book for specific limits. But uh, I think it's a vehicle that would last you a long time. I mean, they have a whole security section on the window sticker including LED headlights, LED front fog lights. I believe there's even an LED rear fog light. Collision avoidance think, uh, featuring low and high speed collision mitigation. Detects uh, vehicle, uh, um, vehicles and pedestrians. Uh, low and high speed collision mitigation. Uh, pilot assist. Um, lane departure. A warning, a lane keeping aid, overcoming uh, mitigation braking, oncoming mitigation braking, front side and curtain airbags. So, you know, 
you know you're getting a safe vehicle with this Volvo. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this at the wheel review of the V60 Cross Country B5 All Wheel Drive. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Cruise Control. Check us out on all our social media platforms. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. Les Jackson. We are going to see you down the road. Bye.